It's now been 25 years since the 1994 crime bill. It's time to repeal it. And it's abundantly clear, putting more people in prison hasn't made us safer. What it has done is decimate communities of color and rip families and communities like mine apart. The 1994 crime bill was written by a bunch of politicians who wanted to show they were tough on crime. So they passed mandatory minimums and tougher sentences, three strikes and you're out laws, and many more arrests for drug offenses. The bill gave states billions of dollars to build more prisons and keep people in prison longer. The result, the crime bill has filled our nation's prisons and jails with our fellow Americans, most of them black or Latino. We spent and keep spending billions of dollars on incarceration and enforcement instead of prevention. In the 1990s, politicians, Democrats and Republicans literally supported cuts to welfare and social services while building more prisons as a response to poverty and disinvestment in communities of color. We're still living with the consequences today. We were building more prisons at a time when we needed better schools, libraries, and community centers in places like the Bronx, Yonkers, and Mount Vernon. It was just a few years after the Central Park Five case. I was a teenager. And as a young black man living in New York, I remember very well when Donald Trump bought full page ads in the city's newspaper calling for the death penalty for my young brothers. I've been an educator for the last 20 years and a principal in the Northeast Bronx for the past 10 years. And I'm running for Congress in New York's 16th district. My opponent, Elliot Engel, helped pass the 1994 crime bill. The American people want a crime bill. The American people are fed up with the proliferation of guns on our streets. The American people understand that we need to put more cops on the beef, build more prisons, and at the same time, give our youth, particularly our inner city youth, a chance. It's not pork, Mr. Speaker. It's just plain good common sense. It's definitely time to repeal it. For over a decade, I've worked directly with the people most impacted by mass incarceration. As an educator and principal, you see the impact on children and their families every day. How can you concentrate in school when your father, sister, aunt, or brother is locked up because they can't afford bail? How can you focus on learning when you have to walk through metal detectors and when there are more police officers in your school than guidance counselors? Can a child truly thrive when her school resembles a police state? One of the things the 94 Crime Bill did was put more police officers in schools directly funding what's known as the School to Prison Pipeline. Black and brown families were over-policed in our communities, and now they're over-policed in our schools too. That's why I decided to open up my own school and do things different. The Cornerstone Academy for Social Action is a middle school in the North Bronx, located in a historically oppressed community that's been impacted by racist policies like redlining, disinvestment, and the 94 crime bill. We are a restorative justice school that educates the whole child. We guide them toward becoming transformative agents of change in their own community. We have conquered the school to prison pipeline. I'm proud of what we have done, but CASA is just the beginning. It's just one school in one neighborhood. If we want to cure our addiction to neglect and torture, we have to start at the top. We can't rely on the same politicians who created our broken criminal justice system to be the ones to fix it. Those closest to the pain should be closest to the power. We need leadership that reflects our communities and our experiences. The kids and families I work with every day in our public schools need resources and opportunities to thrive. That means health care, housing, good paying jobs, and places to play and develop. More police and lengthy sentences are not the solution. Close a jail, build a school. It's time to usher in a new generation of leadership. We need Democrats in Washington who will fight for schools and education, not jails and incarceration. Join the movement and spread the word. Change is coming to New York 16. My name is Jamal Bowman and that's why I'm running for Congress.